This is The Wealth Puzzle with Michael Mansfield from The Lynn Group. When a part of your financial strategy is out of tune, your long-term goals, your retirement savings, and your legacy can all suffer. With many years of experience in the financial industry, Michael provides his clients and prospects with the information they need regarding Social Security, Retirement Income Planning, Wealth Management, and much more. Listen in as we address your financial concerns and provide helpful solutions to put you on the path to achieving your retirement goals. And now, here is The Wealth Puzzle with Michael Mansfield. Welcome to Tana and Mike's Halloween Spectacular. Uh, hi. Tana, welcome. So, hey, look, if anybody's listening to our podcast, I'm going to sound muffled today. And that's because I've shown up. I've shown up as the, the grim something here to, to discuss all things scary to retirees. Tana, yes. you can see if you're watching YouTube or Rumble. I'm not sure what she's supposed to be today. I, I've got some opinions on it, but whatever she thinks. I'm a captain. Is, is it, so, so if your husband's a pilot, are you are you the co-pilot or are you the pilot and he's the co-pilot? I don't know how that goes. I'll take co-pilot. Ooh, I'll let him lead. Scary Halloween. So hey, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching the show. Uh, this is Mike and Tana with our, the Wealth Puzzle. We're here at the Lynn Group. We do retirement planning. And retirement planning can be scary. And so this is the time of year to be scared of stuff. So Tana and I are going to talk about all things scary today. Yes, today. Anything scary you want to talk about first, Tana? I'll tell you what's scary is I got to pop my hands up. <laughs> that way I can work here. That is quite the look for you, I have to admit. Is it? it, it yeah. I figure since I'm already bald that as I age, this is probably not too far off. You know, No, I, get, I can see how little, this like, is going to manifest things cut off itself. Some, some small scars on the top of my head. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Did you so, scare your cute girls this morning? Uh, no, I oh. scare everybody every time I wake up. <laughs> 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 no. Anyway, this is spectacular. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, uh, we're gonna have to power through this show today because yeah. I'm learning really quickly that wearing latex as a mask is terrible. Some people might be into that. I am finding out this is very unpleasant quickly. <laughs> I'm literally drooling on myself right now. Oh, so, that's awesome. For anyone who's uh not watching this, I I, I feel sad for you for just listening. <laughs> the um all right, what's the first thing scary? That we're going to talk about. I'm going to write scary things on a piece of paper and I'm going to show <laughs> Tana and see if I can scare the bejesus out of her. <laughs> so we're gonna see now, the problem is, is my spooky eyes. I can't see a dang thing. Right? I was going to say, it's probably so hard to see through that mask. Yeah, I feel kind of comfortable today. It's nice being behind some oh, shades. First, off, <laughs> first scary thing, Tana. I wrote it on the board. China. China. Are you scared of China? You should be. I heard they pollute twice as much as us. That's not cool. Oh, dear. The, um, so China is pretty scary. So remember, we do retirement income planning at the Lynn Group. And so we're always worried about things that can have an impact on our retirees, mm -hmm. on our clients, on their income, on their investment accounts. And China is pretty scary right mm -hmm. now because China turns out is a giant country. Also turns out that it's a giant communist, socialistic, Marxist, whatever you want to call it country. And guess what? Bad news to all of our stateside communists here. Communism does not work very well in the world of economics. Ooh. <laughs> do, I, do I have to do this stupid voice the whole time? No. <laughs> Like, but it feels like it's more natural than just being normal. Uh, right. Talking, so I don't know. So here, let me pop something up on the screen to scare everybody. So look at this. In the last quarter, China's GDP disappoints. Ooh, that's a scary word. Anyways, I, I, okay, I got to focus. I got to be more normal here. This is the, the stupid time is over. So look, China, China is a huge country, right? They have a huge amount of debt. They have a huge amount of things going on. Um, but what's amazing is... Their GDP, remember their GDP is kind of like the uh, the income you know, of an individual. It's it's the, the cash flow. It's the effort mm -hmm. of a country. It fell to 4.9%. 
Now, there's some irony to China's GDP, and that is it always trends higher than the U.S., but it's been falling for a long time. Look at this pretty chart up on the screen here. You go back really not that long ago, their GDP was 15%. Mm -hmm. I mean, remember, for the last decade, the U.S. prayed for a 2% GDP. Mm -hmm. They had 15%. It was crazy. And what's been happening? Oh, the slow bleed of death has been happening. Now, this is a problem for China because China has a massive amount of debt, more so than we do. And their debt to GDP ratio is over 300%. It is utterly insane. That mm -hmm. should scare the pants off anybody. That's pretty scary. And so what's interesting is, number one, is this something that we want to be invested in? So we have strayed away from the concept of being overly invested in China because their economy is falling apart. Right. Their second largest real estate company, Tan and I talked about that a few weeks ago, Evergrande, falling apart. Mm -hmm. None of this stuff is working well for them. Scary. So, Tana, do you think that China is good or bad for investing in the U.S. stock market? Ooh, scary question <laughs> that we didn't discuss. Previously. Right? And I don't want to have to steer your answer. Oh, this is a to. good question because usually you want to buy in when it's low. Okay, okay, I see your argument. So anyways, it was a trick question because it's Halloween. It's good <laughs> and it's bad, right? So it's bad for companies that do a lot of business in China. Right. But it's good for companies that don't. So choose your companies wisely. Scary. I don't know. I think how many people do you think have, have literally turned off the show at this point? <laughs> <laughs> like it, it's official. It's official. His his special daily morning pill is not working. Oh, that's so awesome. Uh, okay, 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 okay. So China was scary. So we're gonna just get rid of China. We don't like China. We gotta get that off the table here. All right, what's the next US scary thing? How about I would say US debt. <laughs> Was I right? Dude, that yeah. was weird. That was weird. Like, I just wrote that on a piece of paper. Uh, Turns out Tana and I are actually sharing a desk. She's we, sitting right? away from me. That was awesome. How did you do that? that was, uh, I don't know. Dude, just... That was creepy. That was, that was <laughs> as haunting as anything else on Halloween here. <laughs> U.S. dead, is it scary? So it's funny. I think it's scary, but it turns out that our government doesn't give it to whatever in the wind about it. All right, let's show you something scary about the U.S. debt, Tana. The debt clock? Hang on, I don't want to set you. <laughs> <laughs> right? uh. So anybody who doesn't go to this website to put yourself to sleep at night and you're, you're still old-fashioned counting sheep, you're doing it all wrong. You got to come here and just watch <laughs> the national debt increase. So if you look at the upper kind of left corner here, there's a big clock tick and it says U.S. national debt. It's almost $29 trillion. Wow. To put that in perspective, it was about $22 trillion before COVID. So the bad boy is just ballooning. Mm -hmm. But remember, that's one of our scary, spooktacular things to be scared about right now. Is the debt is ballooning. Our government is, is, is officially out of control with spending money. Mm -hmm. And the problem is... Money is not infinite. Now, I know Tana acts like it is the way that she spends. <laughs> I do she not. I think she has an infinite amount of money to rely on. Um, that is not, in fact, true, Tana. You do not. You have a finite amount of money, just like the yes. country. And so the way that money works is if the government decides to go bananas and spend a bunch of it. Oh, by the way, here, let me show you a couple other things on this scary website, usdebtclock.org. On the right side at the top, U.S. federal tax revenue, $3.9 trillion. And then right below the debt clock, it shows U.S. federal spending, almost $7 trillion. Now, anybody who can do math, yeah. which seems to be a hard thing for our policymakers, would know that even That's with a problem. current spending, we're $3 trillion behind. Now, mm -hmm. Tana, here's a quiz question. If you make... 50 grand and you want to spend 30 million dollars <laughs> do you think you're in a good situation no okay. no okay so tana can't handle doing this but somehow the government can uh. <sighs> this is scary now what's even scarier about this everybody 
is that no one seems to care about it. No one seems to be worried about the spending. You know, the, the challenge that you have is going back to the theme that money is not infinite, it is finite. In order for the government to spend more money, guess what? They have to take it from people in the end. That is the only way to spend more money. And if you take it from people, that stifles innovation. That mm. stifles job creation. That stifles risk taking, which is a huge part of a right. healthy capitalistic economy. That's a good now, point. All you might say, Mike, how dare you say such things? Because we want to take it from people and run up our debt. But let me just scare you because I'm the grim reaper of bad news here today. Is anybody who has any common sense could go take a history lesson in mm -hmm. Venezuela or even Japan from the 80s and 90s and know that what we are doing, there is no good outcome. Right. Mm -hmm. Jeez, that was like hardcore. You know. <laughs> Maybe I should wear a mask more. Maybe I'm more confident. Yeah, I like, think so. Mask on, like nobody knows who I am right now. <laughs> and so I can just say whatever I want. Except for I can see your name on the no, screen. No, that's not my name. We should have changed our names today. <laughs> we we should have. Names. I should, we, should have we should have incognito names. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, so anyways, let's turn that off for a second. That was, that was depressing. I should so have changed my background. You should have, but yeah. I changed the background on the whole thing here. I who, know. Who likes? I I want to. I want some emails from people this week. <laughs> Email me if you like the show. Email me if you don't like the show. Yeah. Either way. I just, I just want to know that people are are listening to some degree. All right. Whew. Let's see. It's only been eleven minutes. I only had three <laughs> scary things to talk about. So the good news is, is we should be able to get through this in a timely manner. And then Tana can get back to her, her real job. Of, All right. <laughs> she's, she's finally I've never worn it. a tie before. This is interesting. Is it? Yeah. Well, it's, you know, it's nice. Yeah. Not bad. Right. I've never worn a dress to work before. So I guess we're, we've, we've role reversed today. The, um, okay. 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 Let's see what the next thing is. I'm telling you, everybody, it's really hard to see through these beady eyes and write on a piece of paper. <laughs> so don't judge my writing. This one's going to scare the pants off everybody. What's inflation. Inflation. Now, Tana lives You should have put hyper in front of it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, Jack Dorsey. Yeah. Hyper inflation. So, Tana has some weird uh, hyperinflation. <laughs> That's scary. So Tana has some weird thing with following Jack Dorsey, the guy that owns Twitter. <laughs> it's, it's, it's actually creepy. She's got yeah, like, I'm one, stalking of those, him. Like, one of those like dream boards or whatever. Oh, totally. It, it's got Tana with it, with Jack Dorsey's beard. <laughs> All right. She's like made a collage. So no, Jack Dorsey, who I don't generally have anything good to say about, um, he was just out over the weekend talking about the fear of hyperinflation. Now I find that a little misleading since he's also a huge proponent of cryptocurrency. And so if you can scare people into buying crypto, that's good for Jack Dorsey, but heck, what do I know? Um, where my paper go? We're back to hyperinflation of death. The, um, so look, inflation's out of control. Nobody wants to admit it, right? When this all first started happening earlier in this year, the Federal Reserve came out and, and invented a word, transitory. Woo, that's the word we should have written on there. That's the scary word. It's transitory. It means that it's fake, everybody. You are not, in fact, paying twice as much for gas. You are not, in fact, paying 13 bucks a pound for tri-tip. Oh, I almost choked. <laughs> you, on your like, tri-tip? I'm like swimming. <laughs> Swimming in this mask right now. Ooh, Louise, it's raining outside. The, um, anyways, everything's more expensive. You yeah. know, uh, housing is up 20% in the last year, mm -hmm. but no, it's transitory, everybody. It's fake. It doesn't exist. Are you nuts? Yeah, I'm paying $3 a gallon now out here in Texas. Oh, that is shishy. terrible. Shishy. Shishy. Back Look, in the good old days, I I ain't afraid to admit it. I buy dollar sixty, stuff, man. I I'm in, I'm a, I'm pumping the ninety one into my ride. I got to keep that thing running like a purring like a kitten right. forever. And uh, it's 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 about four eighty five. Okay. 
So I'm teasing five bucks a gallon. Ouch. And, and I imagine that's that's coming pretty quickly because if anybody got bored before the show, I'm sure they checked all the commodity prices and saw that <laughs> oil hit 84 bucks a barrel Ouch. this morning. Well, nothing to see here. There's no such thing as inflation. Mm. So anyways, the feds, they love inflation, right? We're, we're, it's all it's all no big deal, buddy. Hang on, I gotta I gotta pull pull up my, my screen, my inflation screen here. So anybody, you know what's powerful about the internet, everybody, is you can actually do your own research. You know how long it took me to get to the US inflation page, historical inflation? Seconds. I don't know, five seconds. So it's interesting how I you know that's what I that's what drives me nuts about sometimes is so many people love to have conversations with me about headlines and headlines, headlines, headlines. Mm -hmm. And what's challenging is, is I'm a data guy. I am not emotional. I do not like headlines. At this point, I think news is pretty scammy just to get your attention. You know, not all of us are just, you know, privileged private pilots like Tana. Mm -hmm. No. <laughs> you were like agreeing with that for a second. Like, I know, I was. I was. Like, Wait, what did he say? What's, what? what did you smell? I'm on the wrong page here. Uh, <laughs> So anyway, if you go on the screen here, if you see this thing, it's called the historical inflation for 100 years. This is tracking the CPI, the Consumer Price Index. Anyone ever heard of that? Mm -hmm. That's one of the measures Mr. Government uses for inflation. And so what this website does is they put every single month on here. Boom, boom, boom. You see all the months. And then at the end, they do the average. And what's cool for 100 years is you can scroll, 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 scroll all through these numbers. And then you can get to the bottom and, and, and look at your lending tree ad and, and get a, a loan that looks like for 2.01%, which is fun. The um, Let me make this bigger so that I can scare you with big numbers. All right, what do we got here? So in 2021, this shows based on the consumer price index, all of monthly inflation numbers. And in the beginning of the year, they were pretty anemic, right? Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden something happened, something scary. And that is inflation went through the roof. <clears throat> Ooh, I sound like a dog. I feel like I barked. Roof. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> did you hear that? Yes, I, I got to go back and listen to this after. I swear I barked on the first one. <laughs> was, uh, I don't know. Anyways, anyways. But look at inflation last year, 2020. It averaged 1.2%. 1.8%. Look at this all the way back. Yeah. I, I, I can go up. I mean, the highest inflation we've had uh, in the last 10 years is 3%. You know, in 08, it was 3.8%. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I got to go back in time. Remember, at the moment, when you average our monthly ones based on the CPI, which I'll get to in a second, we're over 4%. So let mm -hmm. me scroll up the side to averages. Tana, you let me know when you see a 4%. Oh, right there. Oh, in 1991. Oh, 1991. Now, 1989 is even higher. Yeah. Oh, so that's 1995. Kind of a, an inflation okay. time period. Yep. I remember. But what yep. are we talking about? We're talking about 30 years ago was the last time we had inflation, any, you know, anything like this. Mm -hmm. And in the last 10 decade, I mean, we've had anemic inflation. I mean, every year, one and a half, uh, you know, 15, it was 0.1%. We've never had inflation before, it feels like. And all of a sudden, we're having inflation. I think what's more scary, though, about inflation is what real inflation is. Remember, when they come up with this 5.4% number, they drop off all the things that... Tana, ta do you drive a car? Yes. Oh, wow. Fascinating. Um, <laughs> no, actually, I fly you, a plane. Do you eat food <laughs> ever? Food, by any chance? Yes, I do. Do you happen to want to live... With something over your head, or, or yes, you just live definitely. Out in the field? No. So it's amazing how all of the things that all of us actually use and live by and utilize aren't calculated inside of inflation yeah. because, well, that's just not fair. And so, if you really looked at real inflation, it should scare the pants off you right now because it's our spooktacular, <laughs> and you're probably looking at eight to ten percent. Wow. Of, you know, current projected inflation based on what we're really living and doing and there's no end in sight we have a labor issue in the country we have a supply mm -hmm. chain issue in the country mm -hmm. we have all these things going on that are having a major impact on inflation and oh by the way what was the all oh, right i crumbled up that paper what was the last thing we talked about tana do you remember the u.s debt before US the debt. inflation oh guess what people when you print money it scares you because it creates more inflation because you yeah. know what happens is with, I got this Sharpie pen 
and it's the only Sharpie pen in town, and you go print a bunch of dollars, and now you have more dollars chasing the same Sharpie pen, guess what? Econ 101 happens. The price goes up. <laughs> I assume nobody took Econ 101. I, I, that's the, uh, literally out of 400 plus people in Congress, obviously no one took Econ 101. I'm, I've learned that wholeheartedly. <laughs> You know, I, it's just insane to me. So, anyways, um, see now I'm now I'm now I'm depressed. I'm yeah, like, you're I'm, fired I'm up. I just, I just went to a different place. Like now I'm just sad. I'm just, just sad. sad. I'm just gonna go sit under my desk and wait for the next earthquake. It's all gonna work out. Is it? Yeah. What is it? Yeah. You know, when, last time I was in Texas when we were visiting you, I walked into a market and they had like piles of brisket, which is like a hard to find item here. You got to go to Smart and Final, and and it was like two nineteen a pound. Like they couldn't get rid of the junk, mm -hmm. and I thought, geez, Louise, man, you know. So so meat's up like fourteen percent in the last twelve months on average. I was reading something the other day that they think that red meat could become like champagne, where it's like associated with ooh that oh. unique, lovely time where you got oh you had champagne, right. Yeah. Rare you, right. special occasions only. Right. For the hoity toity of us. So, yeah. anyways. It's gonna be painful. It's gonna be painful. And and that's what's tough is is the feds keep saying it's transitory, it's temporary. <laughs> mm -hmm. The reality is, uh, you know what, with, with the money supply up, with the printing of money, you know, all of those things, yeah. Well, the supply chain eventually get worked out a little bit. Yeah, that's probably gonna take a year or two. Um, will help. Will that help control inflation? Absolutely. But we can't keep printing money, people. We can't. Now, let's 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 positive spin to hyperinflation. All right, Tana. Quiz question to end the show. If you're worried about hyperinflation, do you want to leave your money in cash? No. Is that no. cheating? Is that body language? <laughs> anyway, do you want to put it in <laughs> CDs paying 0.02%? Do you want to put it in bonds that are going down? Definitely not. Okay. So let's think about this, people. You got like, for normal people, unless you're going to invest in that weird digital art stuff or Bitcoin, um, you got like two major options where money is good when you're scared of inflation. Real estate. Well, the problem is real estate got a running start to inflation, right? It decided to go mm -hmm. through the roof last year before there was such thing as inflation. Good so point. It's kind of a played out asset class. And mm -hmm. then you have the stock market, which is scarier than anything. <laughs> Do I look like I'm eating the mic? <laughs> yes. <laughs> the, um, you know, and, and so the reality is for a lot of people, one of the oddly weirdest things to do is, is the safest place to be is in the stock market because big institutions realize that the only way you're going to get this, this positive spread, this net return against inflation mm -hmm. is is inequities that go up. I mean, put it into perspective. If the market's up 15% this year and inflation's 5%, well, you take that off the top. Net, net, you're still up 10% on your assets. Conversely, if the average bond is down 3% this year, probably more at the moment, actually, um, and then you add on inflation, you've lost almost 10% of your bonds, mm. your cash, all of those things. Stock market, good with lots of inflation. Mikey think. I was trying to talk like Yoda there. I don't know if I did that. It but didn't work. <laughs> should have been Yoda. Anyways, Tana, I don't know. You wrap up the show today. I'm, I'm exhausted. <laughs> you are know. exhausted. Bring, bring something to the table here. Yeah. Well, so, we're still in Medicare open enrollment. Right. So give me a call if you need scary. any help with that too as well. It is scary. It's overwhelming. A lot of people are calling saying, what do I need to do? But really, if you're happy with your plans, you don't need to do anything. Everything renews automatically. Just stay the course. Um, there are some changes I've been noticing with some of these prescription drug plans um, that we may need to look at because you might have to switch. Uh, there's a little tricky thing that goes on when they do make a switch. They always put you in the higher um, monthly premium plan. So Sounds I right. don't want you to have to pay more for prescription drugs than need be. So give me a call. We'll get you switched to the lower monthly premium. Yeah. All that stuff's scary, but that's why me and Tanner are here. We're here to help you navigate <laughs> all of this scary stuff. You're here to fight back. So, Hey, look, give us a call. 
uh, 805-500-7035. Visit our main website, the lindgroup.com. Lind is L Y N D, mm -hmm. but let us know what you're thinking. Let us know how we can help you. We can give you a complimentary consultation. We can help you iron out all of your retirement cash flow plans. This is what we do. This is why we're here. So do not hesitate to reach out and everybody enjoy a happy haunted Halloween. <laughs> Wait, I was going to end the broadcast, but I got to play a video first. So uh, Halloween. There we go. <laughs>